against um, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> This, uh, this is uh, about, uh, oh, 1986, Six. we, uh, the two of us, my wife Jean here, Jeannie, and, um, and me, Rod, um, we went to uh, the Bunga Hills and had an expedition there. First time we'd used apple huts in, in uh, Anger. Uh, we flew in the huts off from the coast, uh, about 50 miles inland to uh, uh, land on uh, a small patch of uh, exposed rock uh, by a little lake and we set up a camp there and uh, we were f helicoptered all these huts in off the sea ice first of all onto, onto land when the sea ice broke up and then we flew them in and Jeannie was one of the first people to, into the base and uh, the first thing that arrived I think uh, you can tell them was a microwave. Microwave oven. No power in the microwave oven. Hilarious. <laughs> and um, from then on, things went better. After that, um, the pilot, um, the chief pilot, managed to drop the one hut which was special. Uh, we made a dark room hut. Uh, with blacked out windows and uh, as he was flying over us at a couple of thousand feet uh, we noticed it uh, just as he spoke it, it detached itself from the aircraft and landed in a Edisto glacier nearby from uh, 1300 feet I think into the ice <laughs> so that was demolished um, and things, things improved after that did they not um, until finally we, we had a 50 odd days I think it was uh, of uh, very active um, geologists traveling around and moss experts and uh, um, high-flying helicopter high-flying helicopter we were doing yeah we did aerial photography we darkened off another of the huts to make it into a dark room and so we we're actually printing um, uh, air photography for the geologist uh, while we were working and uh, so everything went smoothly towards the end we began the ship came in again the Nella Dan came in and uh, we prepared to pull out uh, f f uh, yeah, the iceberg was supposed to come and pick us up, but it had been damaged. It bashed its prop on something and and stripped one of the gears, I think. And um, so the Nella Dan was called back from middle of uh, the Indian Ocean to come and uh, pick us up. It was on its way back to Denmark. It was on its way back to Denmark. Yeah, it was on its way home. And so anyway, the uh, the, air, the ship came in uh, close into the cliff um, of the Scott uh, the Scott Glacier. And um, we were starting to fly. We had flown out a lot of stuff onto this iceberg, uh, potential iceberg at the mouth of the glacier, ready for loading quickly onto the ship. All the geology specimens and a lot of stuff. We left the camp, uh, which was going to be used a year after, and so on. And the final f couple of helicopters were due out to pick up uh, Jeannie and I, and. Um, uh, the radio operator. The main thing there was uh, one end of the camp was the radio room, and then I was down on the helipad uh, with Jeannie's pile of uh, medical gear. And um, the last thing I did, I said, right, I'm going to go around and lock up uh, the building. So I went round. And I said, I'm going to the loo. <laughs> <laughs> Very quietly, she said. It was noisy, there were helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> we then um, I went walked around all the huts and rammed the handles down hard and I'm not sure we tied them or not on all the apple huts we had and secured everything and the last thing I walked past the, the toilet which was one, one of those like you see at fairgrounds just a box with a tank at the bottom and door and all that portaloo mm. port and so I shot the bolt on that and went back over to the helipad and um, uh, the other helicopter came in walka 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 landed at, at the uh, radio shack end and finally I saw the radio operator carting boxes out and, and uh, it then took off and I thought well was Ginny? She's not around. Uh, she must have gone with the radio operator. That's fine. I'll heave her boxes on into the back of the helicopter, and we'll go too. And so I was loading the gear into the back of the helicopter uh, when I um, 
noticed the the door on the toilet so it was side on to me it was facing that way and the edge of it was being bent out and there was a small angry looking face it was scrunched up of course it was small <laughs> scrunched up face <laughs> mouth going which is not uncommon <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, <laughs> and I thought, oh, she doesn't want me to load the thing. She wants them a special way into the, the into the thing. So I started pulling the medical boxes back out of the aircraft and put them on the ground. I did. That's exactly what I thought. And um, anyway, I suddenly realised, oh, shitty death. <laughs> I've locked her in the dunny. <laughs> <laughs> and if you hadn't noticed me, I'd have been left behind for days. Because <laughs> nobody would have known where I was. <laughs> it might well have been that I have flown back to the ship and we'd all, oh, where's Jenny gone? You uh, weren't going to the oh, ship, she'll... that was the point. You, weren't yeah, going you, were. to the ship. you were going to the island and you weren't going to the ship for ages. And, oh. <laughs> anyway. no, 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 we did actually go that last time <laughs> back up to the ship. And, um, uh. and, I, and I would have been wandering around the ship thinking, oh, she maybe's up on the bridge or she's down in the bar with the crew <laughs> or, or somewhere with, with other, you know, people. So, um, yeah, she mm. could well have been left behind in the Antarctic rock. <laughs> in Locked the, the portal <laughs> <laughs> something she's always held against me for some reason. <laughs>